stuck and it will be about some new features in BPNS. So, okay. So, hello all. Uh, my name is Siri Sutak and I will work in the JBoss uh, quality engineering department of JBoss. And uh, I will give you a presentation about new features in the JBPM. Uh, I would like to say that I was asked to do this presentation by my manager. So I'm not a developer, uh, but one developer arrived here is Maciej Swiderski from the Poland. So if you have more questions to the JBPM, he will be able to answer them. But I will answer any questions that you might have. So you can ask the questions during the presentation. And you can interrupt me, just raise your hand, and I can answer your questions. And later there will be some space for your additional questions. So here's the agenda of this presentation. I would like to ask you uh, how many of you are familiar with the GBPM? Hmm, not that much. So uh, GBPM is business process suit uh, for the both developers and also for business analysts so to define a flow of or processes in the organizations. So uh, for example, many uh, every organization has a set of processes written in some uh, text or something, but GBPM implements them in the electronic way how to formalize the processes in the organization. So uh, agenda of this presentation will be a business process simulation, uh, KIA API, which is new programming interface for the GBPM6, uh, also the new component, which is execution server, and uh, the GBPM console engine, the tool for uh, starting business processes, monitoring them, and also for the human task management. And the last one uh, is the addition of the uh, Polymeta. So uh, Red Hat acquired Polymeta company last year, and uh, this is uh, business activity monitoring is the new module uh, which is able to analyze data of the uh, execution of the business processes. So I'll talk about that. Please note that the latest released version of the GBPM is alpha version 7, so it's very fresh and everything is very new. There is no, not much documentation about the features I will talk about. So uh, please uh, be patient or be, uh, I don't know how to say it, but uh, there, there might be some things that will change in the, in the uh, new project. So it's not final what will be said here, OK? So I'll start with the description of the GBPM architecture. Uh, there are three, ma uh, three major components. This is the largest one, which is the key IDE. This will be application which will hold uh, many features together. And these features are Governor, which is the tool where you can draft uh, or design business rules. It's, uh, it's used to, these business rules are from the project rules. So you can, de uh, decision logic and any policies you can define in a, uh, in a way of the rules. So this is the tool for the business rule engine rules. Then there will be designer. Uh, designer is a tool uh, for drafting the business processes of the JBPM. So you can draft uh, the business process in a graphical designer. And the, the last one from the key ID is the console ng. Uh, console ng is a tool. It's an improvement of the GBPM console, which were in the previous versions of the GBPM. And this console ng uh, is able also to start uh, business process instances, monitor their state, or uh, it serves also as a task client for the human tasks in the business process. When you have business process, there can be human task which requires interaction uh, with the user. So this is uh, what this, what's uh, human task management about. All these components will run in the new Eberfire framework. This is new. This wasn't in previous versions of JBPM. It's a, a new collection of uh, widgets and elements for all these applications together. And there's, a, there's another change. Uh, previously, all the assets, like business rules and business processes, 
were stored uh, in the in the JCR Java Content Repository. For example, Apache Jackrabbit. This time it will change and it will be done through Git. How many of you know Git? Oh, that's better. So uh, it will be Git. You can, uh, in an easier way, uh, version the version the business processes or the rules, or you can make also branches of the of the business processes. So you don't have linear history, but you can create tree history of your artifacts and assets. Uh, it's the branching is one of the reasons, and what another reason is uh, uh, not to depend on the JCR because it has its drawbacks. Uh, there was uh, there were some problems with the uh, functionality and all the stuff that was able to do with the JCR. So the, it was decision to make it Git based. Perhaps not taken for what. I don't know that. There is an implementation that is abstracting Git. It's called Git Raw File System. It allows like different implementations, and one of them is the Git that is abstracted from the Git the mm -hmm. Okay, so there will be a local repository on the file system, which is uh, by default uh, implementation, or it can be used, and you can connect also to the remote repository somewhere else on the server. Uh, then there is this application from the poly former Polymeter solution, which will be used for business activity monitoring, and then also the execution server. This might change because execution server might not be included as a separate uh, ar uh, web archive, but might be included in this uh, KID key IDE war archive. And these applications will run on top of the JBoss application server 7. So business process simulation. Uh, this is based on the specification of the simulation, uh, which is here. And implement, uh, it's implemented in the web process designer. So you can draft the business process and also view uh, the simulation parts, which are found by the Pathfinder. And also you can uh, run the simulation based on the properties you give to the system. So you have to have some analysis of your of your business processes, of your, or you know, have to know something about your organization, your processes there, so you can provide uh, good uh, input data for running the simulation, so you can learn something new from the simulation. And it's targeted toward, towards business analysts, not, not developers that much. So. This is the example, how can the business process, business process simulation can look like. And this path is this is one example of the path identified by the Pathfinder. So Pathfinder is able to find uh, every path in the business process, and then uh, then you can visualize all the paths, and then run the simulation. So I've talked about Pathfinder already, and uh, simulation is run in the JPPM engine, but it has special extension to this engine to run this simulation. As I said, you have to know uh, the input data f for your organization uh, to select the properties, like which branches to, s to select. There should be 100% uh, probability for some of the, all the branches, like here. You have to specify probabilities, how probable is that the path is chosen, and also uh, specify task properties, how your tasks will take how many time they will take and things like that. So this was taken just from the blog post. There is no documentation about it yet. Uh, there is uh, also video in the at this blog post of Tihomer Sudolovic, so you can play the video and see the more features of this simulation. 
uh, do not new knowledge AP, uh, new key API. This is the thing uh, that is targeted towards developers. So developers can use the new API if they want. It's not obligatory. Uh, the old API, like uh, knowledge API, uh, is, is kept, but uh, only the import has changed. <coughs> so the backward compatibility with the JBPM5 is kept. So, so uh, if you are not familiar with the JBPM, that might be interesting for you as well, this slide. Uh, since many of you have, are not familiar with the JBPM, this is how it was used before. So we have Knowledge Builder, and this Knowledge Builder can parse uh, resources. So you can add resources, for example, from class path, and they are stored in BPM and two files. It's an XML file, uh, and based on, and they have to comply with the BPM and two standard for business processes because there are multiple vendors of BPM solutions. So this is the standard which should every vendor follow. Then you have to create knowledge base. Uh, that's, a, that's a class or object which contains all the compiled definition, both of the business processes and business rules. Based on that knowledge base, and this creating of this knowledge base, it's quite expensive. So uh, you can then create knowledge session based on the knowledge base. And these knowledge sessions are cheaper, that you already have the definitions parsed and compiled. And into the session, you can insert your facts. So you can insert then process variables in case of business processes or facts if you use the session just as, the, uh, just as for the purpose of the rule engine rules. Uh, both can be used. So this is the new API. Uh, it's just a, mi a minor refactoring of the already existing possibilities of the API. It's just refactored. The main change is the is this, this providing of uh, assets. The new way for the assets uh, uh, that, that they can be provided, they can be packaged uh, in jar file, so they cannot. Uh, sorry. Uh, before you had to provide BPM and files or DRL files for the rules. Uh, this time you can package them together inside jar file. So we can distribute uh, that as an ordinary jar file. So we can create a package as a jar file, upload that to the Maven repository, and then download with, uh, through the Maven to your application. So this enables you to uh, download these artifacts from the Maven and also enable to use versioning mechanism of the Maven and you can use that to your advantage. There, there is also a question that if there will be uh, definitions for custom implementations of tasks like uh, work item handlers, if, uh, if it be, if could, could be provided in this way too because uh, then you, would, you might face uh, class loading problems. So once the implementation of the class is class loaded, it cannot be uh, class loaded again with the new version so easily in case of the long running applications. Yeah, question? But would it be still possible to use the old way of providing the files? Yeah, yeah, the old API will be kept so you can, uh, you can use uh, just loading from the class path or mm -hmm. arbitrary path on the file system, for example. Uh, I haven't heard so. This this is not a must. You you can use it this this way, but it's not it's not rule. You you can use the old way of uh, loading the assets. Yeah, that, that will be refactored, I guess. I don't know exactly, but I think it, yes. Yeah, at some point you have to do the refactoring. So this is the, just an example 
how the new knowledge base will be created. It's not called knowledge base in the new API. If you want to use the new API, its its name is shortened, but the the purpose and uh, usage is the same. So you can again create a key base and then key session based on that based on that key base. Also, you can uh, take advantage of the CDI approach. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the context dependency injection? Okay, so uh, that this CDI approach means that you can run a standalone or a container or container inside a CDI container, standalone or inside the application server. So you don't have to care about initializing of the session manager or task service or another provider. So you can just inject the instance here inside your application and you don't, don't have to care about uh, creating it, yeah, like the several commands before that you have to. You just specify, for example, an XML file where the sources are located and it can be, it can be done like that. For example, uh, you can have session manager and you can create a session from the session manager. You can name the session. The session uh, sessions can be named. And then you specify uh, a directory in your reposi Git repository where the, where the assets can be found. So this is the way how you can create a session. Also, uh, the task service, you can use it in the same way. Just you can initialize it through the CDI and then, for example, client the task ID, its number of the task, and then with the name of the user who claims the task. If you want to interact with, with the human task the services and there are tasks available. So this, is, uh, this slide is about JBPM console. Uh, JBPM console was not that good part of the JBPM file because it lacked several features. Uh, for example, uh, this is the console server which exposes some API through the rest and uh, it was optimized just for the JBPM console client. It was op not optimized for every application to be worked. And also it processed its requests in the REST sequentially. So it wasn't very good for uh, concurrency or parallelization. So there will be new implementation of execution server in JBPM6. And this execution server will provide uh, management for the whole life cycle of the business processes in much better way. So uh, this, here are the lists of the features. It will contain also the task server or task service. So it doesn't need to be a separate web archive or separate service running elsewhere. It will be contained inside uh, the execution server. So you can uh, use just the execution server and use the, this task service if you want. There will be also improved session management. So uh, uh, the, in the JBPM5, in console server, there was just one session which was shared for every process instance. In the new execution server, you will have possibility to configure multiple sessions. Also, it will be optimized for clustering. When, when you have multiple requests served at one time, you can have session for each request. Also, the timer management for the clustering will be improved, and the whole clustering support for this application will be improved as well. So this is uh, how the execution server looks like. It's a simplified diagram. So it will contain a session management. And, uh, that's a whole life cycle of the business process instances can be handled there. And uh, also it will provide functionality of the local task service. Its uh, functionality will be exposed through the REST API. And the clients can access uh, this API uh, concurrently. So JBPM console ng uh, is an ap application which will contain both uh, business process management, monitoring, and also human tasks management using the web interface. So you can start business processes there, monitor them, their status, where the flow of the process is now, and change, for example, or change the variables and things like this and also human task management. So you can 
for example, connect or configure, or uh, you can use this application as a universal uh, task client for the users. So you can connect to the LDAP repository. For, for example, if your company has LDAP, you can download your entities there and use them. And every user then can connect to this uh, yeah, as a human task client and co uh, complete his tasks based where the business process is. So we are moving to the last point of the agenda. It's the business activity monitoring. Uh, as I said, it's based on the work of the developers from former Polymeta. And uh, uh, how, is there any business analyst here? Or just developers? <laughs> OK, no business analyst, OK. <laughs> Because uh, this is for the people who love Excel. Yeah. You have graphs, charts, and everything like this, and tables. And this is much like Excel-like stuff, so that's not too interesting for developers. <coughs> but uh, what's this about? You can create uh, data providers. And these data providers can be based on, for example, CSV files or as SQL queries to query a database. So you can uh, select any data you want. And that's up to you how to define that. And then you can, uh, based on these data providers, you can create key performance indicators, data table reports, process execution metrics. And the, all these things, what, what can come to your mind, you can just visualize in the graph or chart. Or It's possible to do there very, a lot of things. It's, it's rich web user interface, and uh, it's uh, it look like Excel to do these things and this analysis. So this this is an example. This, it's a summary of uh, some GBPM tasks from sample data. So you can specify how, how the graph should look like. You can specify colors, height, type of the chart, and everything like this. Also, you can create tables to see uh, how many tasks. Now, these are process instances, sorry. So the process instances, how many of the processes were, were run or are active, completed, pending, and these things. These are tasks done by the user or started by the user. Oh, sorry, instances again, sorry. So this, this employee is the most active one, so you can see these things. It's uh, that if you have this solution implemented in your organization, these business processes, you can then analyze uh, uh, the, these input data, and you can create a lot of lot of stuff with that. I'm not business analyst, so I don't tell more scenarios. But this is the way which was uh, requested to be added and improved in the JBPM6 and also statistics of the human tasks. So you can name the tasks and how many of them were launched or completed on these things. So uh, the presentation is going to end. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, you can contact the community at this uh, discussion forum ca that can be found at the projects page on the JBoss wiki. And or, or you can write your message to the JBPM channel at Freenode. If you contact me, that's my mail. So uh, if you have any question, please ask. No questions, everything's clear. OK. I think that I I think that this won't be included in the JBPM six. It's out of the scope. So I don't I, I don't mean implementing it, but just making making this interface uh, a, a bit more, more modular than it is 
Uh, I remember your message on the uh, GPPM community forum. I re read it a lot, so I know that you have asked it there. So um, perhaps you can talk with Matej after the presentation if he'll be able to tell you more details. So, so that's maybe the best answer now. Any, any more questions? Okay, so I, I hope that the presentation for you was helpful because uh, I've expected that you would you have some knowledge of the GBPM already. So uh, if not, sorry, but <laughs> uh, I hope that that it will it was helpful for you. So thank you for. Thank <laughs> you.